Hey, brother! Ben, the Dursleys, am I right? Just pff, awful people. Drill salesmen? <laughs> Oh, I don't know if you guys know any drill salesmen in person, but they are always trying to screw you. Seriously though, I'm re-listening to The Sorcerer's Stone right now, or Philosopher's Stone, or whatever pleases you, and I have to say, one of the things that makes me so mad, like the meanest thing they do, is the bedroom situation. Obviously making someone live in a cupboard under the stairs is, you know, awful in it of itself. But here's the thing, here's what makes it even worse. They have four bedrooms in that house, which means they have not one, but two spare rooms that they are not letting Harry use for 10 years. And why are there so many spiders in the cupboard under the stairs? Petunia seems like she's cleaning all the time. Ugh, just makes me feel so bad for Harry. I mean, I really just wish he would have grown up with James though. That would have been a lot better, right? Or would it? So yes, obviously the Dursleys were miserable, but they did end up turning Harry into this lovable underdog who was just utterly unaware of his fame. If he were to have grown up with James and Lily, he would have grown up the son of wealthy wizards and may have become... Saint. Potter. Well, maybe not a saint, but he might have ended up a little bit more like Malfoy. But speaking of James and Lily, here's a question we never really, I feel, get a satisfactory answer to in the books, despite Harry outright asking it. And that's, why does Lily end up marrying James? I mean, in literally every flashback we see, James is kind of being a jerk. We know he was a bit of a jock, and we know that he was spoiled a little bit by his own parents, and he definitely really cares about his looks, like always ruffling his hair so it looks like he just got off his broom. And we also know that Lily actually seems to dislike him for a while at some point. I mean, I think she actually calls him a toe rag whatever that is. On the other hand though, he was extremely gifted at magic. I mean, he made the Marauder's Map. He became an Animangus while in school. He was an amazing Quidditch seeker and he was head boy. Which is weird, right? Wasn't Lupin the prefect that year? Don't you have to be a prefect to become head boy? Whatever, I guess. I mean, maybe being Quidditch captain also qualifies you for some reason. In any case, the only real explanation we get is that during his seventh year, he just stops being so arrogant and like turns over a new leaf and Lily sort of comes around to him. But then again, when your uh, other option is Snape, maybe, uh, maybe that's all it takes. But in any case, the reason I bring it up is because how we see James at school, I feel is the best indication of what Harry might have been like had he actually just been raised at home by James and Lily. Which is to say that like James, he would have grown up the son of wealthy wizards. He would have been a popular and successful Quidditch season. And most importantly, I don't think he would have had that heart of the underdog. I mean, I'm Harry. Just Harry. What I mean is, he never would have understood the plight of those who were powerless and bullied because he never would have had such an experience firsthand. And it is that trait in particular, especially early on, that defines Harry. Like with Ron, Harry grows up having nothing. So when he meets Ron, another kid he understands is poor, he is eager and wants to share everything he can with him. Because for the first time in his life, he has something and someone to share anything with. We'll take the lot. Whoa. But on the other hand, you have Malfoy, who is the first wizarding child of his own age that Harry meets, and within minutes, he almost immediately dislikes him because of his prejudices. Even says, by the second, he's reminding him of Dudley. When Harry meets Malfoy, he's really only known he was a wizard for like a day at that point. And during that time, he's basically been peppering Hagrid with questions about the wizarding world, trying to get a better grasp of it. And here's Malfoy, this kid who is his own age, who is going to the same school, who knows a lot of stuff and who's offering up the information freely, and Harry's like, nope, mm-mm, not you. I think for most kids in Harry's situation, that interaction might have gone a little bit differently. I mean, the comfort of meeting someone your own age who's going through what you are, who's going to the same school, who can teach you things, that's someone you'd want to immediately start talking to, but not Harry, because he knows what a bully looks like. And like I said, once he does meet someone who is friendly with them, that's exactly what he does. Ron ends up being his best friend. I'm Ron, by the way. From Weasley. Now, I understand this whole situation is kind of hypothetical anyway, because if Harry's parents were around, it would basically mean that Voldemort 
wasn't, or that he chose Neville instead, or that the Fidelius charm had just been working the entire time. But all three of those situations mean that Harry never gets marked as the chosen one, so then, you know, who cares if he's, you know, kind of like his dad when he goes to school. But the point is, Harry is the chosen one, and although his time with the Dursleys is miserable, it does force him to become the person he needs to be to defeat Voldemort. I mean, it sounds mean, but can you imagine if the Dursleys had treated Harry, like, lovingly the way they treated Dudley? If you can really call that lovingly. But then Harry would have been a lot more like Dudley, and then to discover he was famous? I mean, when he just ran into mouth for there, I think he would have been fast friends with him. Like, that one interaction could have changed everything. He could have been the one bullying Malfoy. Like, oh, your dad's a big deal? I'm Harry Potter. I feel like he definitely would have been sorted into Slytherin under those circumstances. Now, there's anything wrong with being in Slytherin. Being a Slytherin is awesome, but for the purposes of the book, they are typically the bad guys. And really, though, being a Gryffindor is so much a part of Harry. So, should we be thanking the Dursleys then? Are we happy they were mean to him? Or do we just also wish that they'd been nice to him or treated him like a normal kid? I mean, you never want to treat a kid poorly, but somehow, oddly, this ends up working out for the best. So, uh, well done, Dursleys. You raised a kid who knows right from wrong, even though somehow you don't. But then again, is it even the Dursleys' fault? Should they be the one getting all that glorious credit for treating Harry so badly? Maybe not. If you will recall, in The Deathly Hallows, there is a mm, somewhat important scene where Harry wanders into the woods and sacrifices himself. <laughs> I guess that's kind of a big plot point. But the reason Harry does this is because he learns that he is a horcrux and that this is the only way to destroy that piece of Voldemort's soul. By the way, I know we can sit here and argue about whether or not Harry is a legitimate horcrux because of reasons, but you know what? Undeniably, he has a piece of Voldemort's soul in him. Can we agree on that? And fortunately, we get to see a few examples of what happens to people who spend too much time with pieces of Voldemort's soul. Most notably though, Ron and the Locket. Throughout the Deathly Hallows, Harry, Ron, and Hermione are all adversely affected by this thing, but none more so than Ron, who after just a couple of months becomes irritable and moody and hateful. And all of this coming from an object he doesn't even like to begin with. Well, what if Harry is having a similar effect on the Dursleys? We actually made a video about this very thing a while ago with a significantly worse thumbnail, but I do recommend you go check it out by clicking the card. So again, Ron is a fairly strong-willed wizard who is being affected by an object he hates. And the Dursleys are kind of dumb muggles who open their home to a baby. And we know the Dursleys are capable of their own brand of love, and even if they highly favor their son over their nephew, I have to think, it is really hard to take care of a baby day in and day out and not love it at all. I mean, at least, at least a tiny bit, right? What if, by opening their home to Harry, they also open their hearts to the effects of Voldemort's soul? I mean, even before they get Harry, McGonagall says they couldn't be less like wizards, and we know they have a disdain for people who are different to begin with, but by the time Harry's ten, it is out of control. Again, two spare rooms! For people who seem really concerned with how others view them, they seem to not be considering at all what people are going to think of mistreating a child. They seem to treat Harry poorly for no reason other than that maybe he's a wizard. Except there is a reason. Because they opened their home to him, and thus their hearts to Voldemort. And by unknowingly letting Voldemort in, they let fear control them, and so they try to avoid the source they just can't ever seem to place by hiding it under the stairs. Which is just so fitting, because then, once again, Voldemort causes his own downfall. Had Harry been raised in almost any other way, he almost certainly wouldn't have ended up as noble and courageous as he does. But because just a tiny part of Voldemort is able to corrupt Harry's aunt and uncle, he ends up creating his own worst enemy. Ben, my question for you and everybody else is, what do you think? Do you wish Harry had been raised better, or are you happy the Dursleys were such jerks? Let me know your thoughts in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing! And a special thanks to these patrons who support Super Carlin Brothers on Patreon.
Guys, thanks for watching. As always, please remember to like this video if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you'd like to see what Dudley's Dementor vision was, you can check out this video right here. Or if you want to learn why Cornelius Fudge is just the worst, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.